Hi guys, today I'm going to share with you my roasted acorn squash soup. I hope you enjoy the following video. Have a great day. Thank you. Okay, so let's get started. And I'm sorry about the shadows. It's a rainy, gloomy day today. So I don't have sun shining in. The lights on. Okay, I have pre-washed acorn squashes, and we're going to cut them in half. Ooh, hard, hard as a rock. Maybe better to start from this side. Yeah, that works better. Don't start on the stem side. blocking me. So we want to cut them in half as best as possible. So you can save these and you can roast these. You can save them and plant them for next year. Or you can just discard them. And I'm sorry, I am right handed, so you can't see what I'm doing. Bam, seeds. I want to scrape them all out really good. Get all that stringy flesh. They're not as hard to clean as a pumpkin, though, I will say. Bam! Oh, wait, I'm not supposed to say bam, am I? That's somebody else's thing. <laughs> I always said that though before. I don't say it just about cooking though. Whenever it applies. I still got a little stringy green yuckies I'm trying to get out. I'm going to continue that with our other pieces and we'll be back like magic. Okay, so now that we have them all cleaned out, turn another light on, put a little light on the subject. We're going to take a little bit of olive oil, just a wee bit, a little dollop in each one. Oop, that one's got a little bit much. Just a wee bit. I don't know if you can see it in there. And then we're going to take our a brush, basting brush, just swirl it around the entire inside and the exposed flesh on top. Like so. Yeah, this one's got a little bit too much olive oil. We're going to continue to do that with all of the acorn halves. I have a bowl. 
tool that I use when I have excess grease from meat or whatever. I washed it. Anyhow, excess oil. So the excess oil, because I drink too much, I'm going to put in my grease bowl. Now, I don't save this or reuse it. I just don't put it down my drain because it's not good for your drain. Wipe the hands off. And when the bowl gets full, dump it in the trash outside. So it don't sell my trash in the house. And then we're going to squish them together so I can do this. Salt and pepper. salt and pepper in each one. You don't need a ton. And I got my oven at 350 and depending on the size about between 40 to 60 minutes you're going to roast these off in the oven. They'll be fork tender when they're done and I'll be back to show you. I like magic. Okay, so our acorns have finished roasting off in the oven. You can see they're kind of brown, a little crinkly up by the skin. The skin is kind of curling over on it, and insert, a fork inserted is fork tender. You want to make sure to get in the thick part, too, in case it needs to cook a little bit longer. So we're going to let these cool, and then we'll be back with more magic when they're cool. Okay, so we're gonna get started making our acorn squash soup. I have here two tablespoons of unsalted butter and two tablespoons of olive oil. To that, I have one very, very large carrot. I mean, it was large. It was probably the size of this spoon. Uh, otherwise, use a couple small or medium-sized ones. And one large onion. We're going to go ahead and add all of this and we're going to saute it until it's nice and soft. I have it on medium, medium low heat. Give it a stir to get everything coated with some oil and butter. Now, while that is sauteing, we're going to come over here and prepare our squashies. Too hot to set it on the counter. Nope. Okay, I wanted to make sure it wasn't too hot to set on my counter. So, I have here my roasted squash, and I'm going to go ahead and scoop out the meat and put it in my bowl. Sorry, not. I am right-handed, not left-handed. I'm basically just using a spoon, scooping all the meat out. Leaving pretty much the skin. Try and do it so you can see. I apologize if it's not working very well. Discard the skin. Let go. Keep an eye on your onion and carrot as you're prepping your squashes. Giving them a stir. Make sure everything gets 
cooked well. Try and do this so y'all can see. My hand is so oily now from the squash. If you don't really like eating squash in and of itself, making a soup is a great way to eat the squash without the texture if that's the issue for you. Plus it completely changes up the flavor profile when you cook it this way versus just eating roasted squash. This one's still hot on the bottom a little. Just make sure they're cool enough where you can pick them up before you start doing this. Ooh, this one's quite hot on the bottom actually. Just in the very center on the bottom. I guess because this one was thicker. And as you see, two little acorn squash yields a lot of squash meat. So you don't need more than that for a batch of soup. I mean, if you want it on the heavier side of squash in your soup, then go ahead and use three or four. I don't think I'd amp it up to more than three, personally. Give our vegetables a stir. The stem might come off. Nope, I think not. Make sure you don't get any of the skin. Just want the squashies. I'll do it this way. Maybe my arm won't block as much. Oh, here, this should work better for you to see. Now the skin is peeling back, so I can just scrape the meat away. And it's slipping out of my hand. There we go. No skins. Get all the squash off there. Going to clean my hands. stir my vegetables really quick before I move the camera. I don't want them to burn. That would be bad. Okay. I'm going to set the squash aside and I'll bring it back over to the stove. Hopefully you can see it in there. These are nice and translucent.
Okay, I'll be right back with you when this is all prepped. Okay, our vegetables are cooked nice and translucent. I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, or, sorry, white pepper. You can use black pepper. In addition, I'm putting a half a teaspoon of salt directly in. And I'm going to add six cloves of diced up garlic. I want to give that a stir. I just want to cook it till it's nice and fragrant. Fragrant. Word diarrhea, vomit, whatever. Can't speak. Now, I want to show you what I have here. So I'm gonna back this up a little. I have here two and a half cups of vegetable stock. We need four cups of stock total. You can use all vegetable stock if you want. I am going to add low sodium chicken stock, the difference, so I get four cups. Now, the only reason I mixed them is because I had two open containers. I needed to use them. So why not mix it instead of all of one? So you can use just one stock if you prefer. Okay, so now our garlic, mm, smells good, is a little fragrant. I'm going to take half of my stock, so about two cups worth, and pour in. I'm going to let that do some magic. Scraping up any little brown bits you might have from the bottom of the pan. It is hot in this house. The sun finally came out about 3.30 in the afternoon. Nice of it. If you can see the little dark spots, those are the little brown bits from the vegetable. We want to make sure we scrape that up. Brown bits equals flavor. Yum yum! And make sure you have your pan on medium low. So if you didn't and you had it a little higher, reduce it to medium low. We're going to cook this for a little bit. About know, a minute, maybe less. Now we're going to take the rest of our stock and go ahead and put it all in. To that, I have 12 sprigs of thyme. I'm gonna drop that in. You can tie it up in a bundle or you can leave it like that. And one bay leaf.
in addition, I'm going to add one tablespoon, if I can get it to cooperate. What's honey known for? Being slayer. I'll let this honey come out here. bottle of honey is just not working. I think that one might be not useful now. Hopefully I have more honey. Ugh. Trying to avoid a sneeze from that pepper. I'm gonna add one teaspoon of honey. I'm not adding more than that because I want to reduce any sugar in it because of diabetics. Normally I would put two, tea, two tablespoons, but we're going to reduce it. Can to give it a stir. Oh, that was sticky. Turn this away. Give it a stir. Okay, so we are going to let this continue cooking for 15 minutes and I'll be back with you in 15 minutes. Haha, uh -huh. I forgot one of the most important ingredients. I'm a dummy. Guess what we need in here? Squash! <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and add our squash to our bowl. What a dummy. Uh, I turned around and I'm like, uh oh. Forgot my squash. Okay. So we're going to continue cooking this now for 15 minutes. Sorry about that. Okay, so our soup has been cooking for 15 minutes approximately. We want to locate our bay leaf and remove that. And our thyme. There's one. Snakey, snakey. That's why it'd be easier if you tied them in a bundle because you make sure you get them all when you take them out. It's not necessary though. Most of mine were attached to one another, so I knew what I had in there. And plus, I may have bad vision, but I'm not blind. I can see them. Just take them out. Gee, turn off our heat. And I'm gonna move y'all over here for the next step. So let me get this camera set right. Hopefully y'all can see. Okie dokie. So I'm gonna go ahead and my soup in here and splatter everywhere. <gasps> Place my pot back on the heat. Make sure you get any little bits of 
onion and carrot or whatever out of the pot because we are going to put it back in the pot for a little bit and we don't want to painstakingly do this next step and then put it back in and have chunks of onion. That would not be good. Okay. Voila. Now we're going to go ahead and puree it nice and smooth. You want a nice deep dish or use your blender in batches, half batches. But if you have oh, a puree, don't do what I just did like an idiot. I forgot to let go before I pulled it up. Okay, one sec, clean up my slop. That was dumb. Uh, anyhow, as I was saying, if you have a pureeer and you're doing it the way I am, make sure you have a nice deep dish so you don't splatter it everywhere. continue doing this and I'll be back when it's all smooth okay we're gonna continue with our soup it's all pureed nice and smooth we need to add a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg Just gonna make it taste so yummy. Now, if you, for the next step, if you have some kind of a food allergy and you can't have cream products, leave the milk product out. If you don't, we're gonna add a quarter cup of half and half. to give this a stir oh it smells so good in here and with the honey and the nutmeg and the cinnamon it's very very fall-esque flavors and very much not tasting much of actual squash so give it a try fasha Now we're going to come over here to our pan and we're going to pour it back in the pan. We're going to put a layer and we'll let it cook so that the spices heat through it for another two to three minutes. yummy so we'll be back in two to three minutes and there you have it acorn squash soup i hope you've enjoyed this recipe please like subscribe and share thank you have a great day